Hi everyone and welcome to my test ride review of the new Honda Rebel 1100. I've been riding around for two days now in Lower Austria on the new Honda Rebel 1100. By the way, check out this beautiful area here. It's gorgeous. It's a little windy. I hope it will work with the mic. So the Honda Rebel 500 is probably one of the most popular beginner bikes and one of the most popular beginner cruiser bikes for sure. And now Honda thought, okay, before people who want to upgrade to a bigger bike after the Honda Rebel 500, then they would have to go away from the brand. So now they said, okay, let's make a new Rebel. And now here it is, the Rebel 1100, which has the motor of the Africa Twin. So it has that 1084 cc parallel twin of the africa twin of course adjusted to the cruiser segment so next to some other adjustments it has 87 horsepower at 7000 rpm and i think the africa twin had like 102 horsepower and it has 98 newton meters and at already 4750 rpm the africa twin was at like 105 newton meters and this engine in this bike is just so much fun to ride. It has a lot of power in the low RPM and in the mid RPM range. And thanks to coming from the Africa Twin, it also has a lot of electronics in it. So we have throttle by wire with different riding modes that we can select while riding also. So we have standard mode, we have a sport mode, we have a rain mode and a user mode. And in the user mode, for example, you can also disengage the traction control. The sport mode is like a very, very different character than the standard mode. So you can totally feel the differences in the different riding modes for sure. It's funny that it has wheelie control, you know, but there you see that it comes from the Africa Twin. And then in the other modes, it's just adjusted a little more gentle and a little more friendly. And the sport mode is just really, yeah, more badass. And that I really like because um, it makes this bike so good for even beginner riders, but also for experienced riders to have plenty of fun and play around. But also for beginner riders, they just select a different mapping and feel safe. And it's a very agile bike, so it's handled so well in the turns, also thanks to the low weight. And I couldn't believe when I read how, how much this bike weighs, because it's, um, I think, 223 kilograms fully fueled. We measured it actually, and of course, fully fueled by manufacturers is always only, only like 90% fueled. And we put it like, we topped it with fuel and it was 227 kilograms, but that's so much less than all the competitor bikes. It's like 30 kilograms less and you can definitely feel this, especially in the turns. Also cruiser typical is the seat position. So you have an upright seat position, you have your arms reached to the handlebars to the front. And if I sit down here, you can see hands are stretched to the front and I sit very upright and what I was surprised at first was because I wanted I'm used to like big cruisers that I would put my legs to the front more stretched but then I noticed oh the footrests are here <laughs> so there's quite a big difference to other cruisers and I had to get used to this position a little bit or wasn't that familiar to me but I learned to appreciate it once I got to the very twisty roads because the lean angle is better than on other cruisers. I mean, it's around 35 degrees. So if you're coming from a naked bike or a sport bike segment, then of course this will not be much for you. In the beginning, of course, I scratched a little bit because the day before I hopped off a speed triple and then I went on a cruiser bike. And of course, then you have a kind of different technique, but then I got used to the cruiser again. And then it was super easy to go into like very, very tight 
serpentines even, without scratching because you have a better lean angle here and some people don't mind the scratching. I personally do get scared when it scratches. I, I, just, I just cannot get used to it. All in all, after riding two days, it was a very comfortable seat position for me. I'm 5'6", or 1 meter and 69 centimeters, and my knee angle was not too bad. I could imagine that for like taller riders, this might, they might feel a little cramped after some time. But, for, but from my perspective, with my height, uh, it just fit perfectly. And of course, the cruiser typical very low seat position, I think 700 millimeters is just makes every bike so so easy to maneuver what i did mention before was uh, that this here is the manual transmission so i have to engage the clutch and honda offers also the dct the dual clutch transmission this is a cruiser so i could imagine that there's many people who would want that so you don't have to engage the clutch anymore i cannot tell you unfortunately if it works well on this bike I could imagine that it does because I've tried it on, for example, the Honda Forza scooter and there it worked well, but I hope I get my hands on one soon and try it out myself. But I personally would always prefer the manual transmission, also in a car, but always on a motorcycle. I also measured the fuel consumption. It was, I think, like 5.5 liters, so it's not much uh, that it consumes. The sound, I have to say, if you expect the Africa Twin sound, uh, I mean, it also has the, the 270 degree crank and some other refinements on a motor that should make it more sound like a, like a V2 engine. But if you expect the sound of the Africa Twin, which is a little louder, then you might be a little disappointed because this bike, uh, it, you cannot compare the sound to uh, like an Indian Scout or a Harley. <laughs> because it's very, very gentle, I would say, with the sound. Um, for people here in Europe, at special regions where you may not go if you are over 95 decibel, this might be a good thing, because now here we have only 93 decibel. For the brakes, we only have a single disc in the front. It's a 33 millimeter single disc. And for a cruiser, it actually worked really well. So even going downhill, and I really tried it out at different situations, and it worked well. I mean, it's not a naked bike, it's not a sports bike, so don't expect a brake like that. And of, but because the weight is so low and the brake is good, it decelerated in time. Two fingers on the brake were enough for me, so I cannot complain about the brake, even if it's only a single disc, like all the other cruisers like most of the other cruisers also have. The suspension by Shova is adjustable in the front and in the rear in the preload. And it worked quite well on the streets here in Austria. Slight bumps were no problem at all. Big bumps and like holes in the ground, you could definitely feel it. So of course you don't have a lot of suspension travel. It's a cruiser, <laughs> but if you buy a cruiser, you are already aware of this. So for me, there's like four highlights on this bike. So one is the engine that I already loved on the Africa Twin. It's so good and it's really great in this bike too. Um, second is the weight, which is way less than the competition. It's, I think it's like 30 kilograms less. The DCT version, by the way, is 10 kilogram more than this version and the rider aids that the bike has and the fourth highlight for me is definitely the price because it ha has all these things it's like a complete package of stuff it doesn't cost much it's in germany it's like 10,600 euros and uh, dct version costs i think 1000 euro more in germany in america it's i think 700 dollar more so it's a very affordable price and you get a lot of bike for it and it's a really nice cruiser i like that honda did this step of course like for me emotions are a big part um, especially when it comes to cruisers and for me when it comes to emotions an indian a harley and a triumph would win over this also from the sound but i think this bike just has some other advantages 
over the competitors and they make it such an easy bike to ride it makes it such a fun bike to ride and it makes it such an accessible bike for beginner riders for experienced riders and also for people who want to get back into riding it's available in this beautiful gunmetal black they call it and it's also available in a bordeaux red and there's plenty of accessory available if you want to take it for a longer tour there's um, luggage options there's a windshield and all that kind of stuff you have here is this this is the accessory passenger seat it's not quite big i tried it out it's for me it's definitely plenty of space but it's not a huge comfortable seat but it's not a huge comfortable touring passenger seat you can remove the seat the key is here typical cruiser on the side so if you push it in here and then you can lift seat up and then i think you have three liters of space in here put first aid in here maybe a sandwich and a bottle of water and some tools so that's nice too there's also a usb c socket in here to charge your phone or your navigation system and all right that's what comes into my mind right now i hope it answered some of your questions and leave a comment if you have more questions i will try to answer them and i will keep going now because the weather is changing soon so i just want to enjoy some more riding with this fun bike thank you so much for watching i would love to read your comments leave a thumbs up if you like this video and i hope to see you next time again thank you so much take care bye bye